So thank you very much everybody for coming to the last session. So the first of all, so the, I'm not streaming any more anything. So the, please don't listen to the talk as if you are reviewing your part, or reviewing my part. Okay, please. <laughs> so this is pure fun. All right. So the, this is the, the, I'm, my name is Michio Honda from NetApps. I'm working with some internship students and my colleagues. Right. So the, the, let me explain the motivation of our work first. So the first motivation in Linux TCP IP is awesome. So because, you know, the TCP was a simple protocol in 20 years ago, but now it is not simple protocol anymore. So Linux TCP IP has all of the features extended by researchers, ITF, or OS developers, everybody. The main purpose is to cope with all the network conditions and traffic <coughs> patterns. So, for example, so first open data center TCP, probably everybody knows, but some less known important TCP features like FAC, FRTO, RAC, DSAC, FAC, etc. There are a lot of extensions. So also the, it is much less known, but there is a lot of security enhancements, like probably the most recent one is RFC 5961, like some <coughs> protection from off-pass attack. Also there are a lot of minor extensions for security as well. So if we look at uh, the out of three, there's a lot of the nice TCP extensions, like multi-pass TCP and TCP crypt. <coughs> right. so that's very nice and fairly complex. So the, the other, another motivation is, so on the other hand, there's, these days we have seen a lot of some user space TCP IP running on top of very fast packet dial framework, such as TPDK or NetMark. So probably the, the most well-known one is Sista, I think. Sista is some the user space TCP IP that runs on top of DPDK and developed by some ex-Red Hat guy, including Abi Kibiti. So, like that. So the, why user space TCP IP is fast is some people say it's because of zero copy, etc. but that is not real reason because, you know, the copy is not expensive anymore. So the, why they are fast is basically because they dedicate a NIC to a single application. You know, Linux TCP IP stack is designed uh, to share the NIC among all the applications, but user space TCP IP, they basically dedicate a NIC to a single dedicated single privileged application. So the, what, uh, because of that, they can execute NICs at your like DMA based on application space based on application preference, also they can execute a network stack uh, the when, whenever they like. So definitely they also have direct packet buffer access. So the, both of Linux TCP IP and user space TCP IP is excellent, so the, we <coughs> want to integrate the best aspect of both of the world. That is our motivation. So the, here the, we, so in this work, we specifically focus on uh, the two problems, two or two combined problems. So the, because the Linux TCP IP performs pretty well for bulk data transfer, such as some large file send, but it doesn't perform well compared to user space TCP IP for the request for tra request response traffic with small packet messages at high packet rate. So the, also for such workload, uh, traffic normally, you know, server must handle large number of concurrent <laughs> TCP connections. So the, which creates the long queuing delay. So let me explain how such a queuing, queuing delay happens. So sorry for bad illustration, but this is our system. So there's a NIC, uh, TCP IP on top, so Linux TCP IP on top of that. So the top square is uh, the server application. So the rounded square means socket. Okay. So this server is handling three sockets, three TCP connections. Imagine that, and uh, three requests are coming, so which, uh, which will go to the different socket because they are different requests. Okay. So TCP connection is already established. So the first packet is identified to go to the first socket by TCP IP, and the second one goes to the last socket, and last packet go to the second socket, like that, okay? So then the server calls basically epoch wait, or server might have already called epoch wait or whatever. So basically the server calls epoch wait, after that the application can see this socket uh, the being pulled in. 
So the application then read data using read system call or receive message, whatever. Then they do some processing, such as validating HTTP GET. And then it calls write system call or something, which is followed by the TCP send message. Okay. Then this further calls WKX meet. Then the server processes the next socket, read request, and write TCP send message. So in this way, basically the server the processes TCP connection, so file descript as in turn. So what we expect from here is if we have large number of concurrent TCP connection, we have the la larger number of file descriptors written by single epoch weight. Okay, this is what we expect. You understand? Okay. Oh, fuck. So the, the, this is the, some the, the demonstration of that behavior. So the, we run some single threaded like sub application, like as I explained, and but we change the concurrent number of TCP connections by the client. So the x axis means how many concurrent TCP connection that client generate. And uh, the y-axis is number of file descriptors returned by epoch weight, single epoch weight, okay? So this is exactly what we expect. So if we have the larger number of concurrent TCP connections, so the more larger number of descriptors are returned by epoch weight, okay? So the, what we further expect from here is uh, we will see increased uh, the longer average and tail latencies because you know the to, to for the last socket to be processed, it has to wait for the all the processing of the, the previous sockets. So that this is the result. So the x-axis is the concurrent TCP connections. So we use the same data set for this graph. So the x is the concurrent TCP connection. So y is the latency measured by application, a client application. And so it is end-to-end -end latency. So the, if we have a larger number of con TCP connections or a larger number of the file descriptors returned, then the, we have increased average and 99 percentile latency. Yeah. This is what we expect and how the problem happens. So OK, so the, basically the, the, what we want to do is we want to address this problem. And we want to, so this, so this behavior, uh, the re increase in latencies, also the, the prevent throughput from increase. So. Okay. So as I said, we want to integrate best aspects of the, the Linux TCP IP and the user space TCP IP based on fast packet type framework. So the, we are pretty happy with dedicating a NIC to privileged application because today it is pretty common. So for example, we, we run some of the busy web servers, so we allocate some 10 gigabit NIC to web for the, for the service and we allocate a different NIC for some SSH or backup or those things. So it's pretty fine. So we take this opportunity. But uh, the, we, we want to use TCP IP stack in the kernel. So the point is, so the Linux is a monolithic kernel, so the, we have to share the single network stack instance. So the, it means the regular application is running on top of the same network stack, but on different NIC. But still, again, it's same on top of the same network stack. It means uh, the, as you know, so my application is always buggy, so the, I don't want to crash whole the system when my application crashes. Okay, so the, so the thing is, yeah, so that's a requirement. So, so by different NICs, I assume you mean different queues on NIC, right? Yeah, so the, at high level, it doesn't matter whether it is different queue or different NIC, but, uh, but in the perspective of current implementations, so it has to be different NIC. So this is the architecture of the, how our system works. So we call our system stack map, which is taken from the name of NetMap. 
So the f first of all, so application registers a NIC to so that it is dedicated to that application. But uh, the, we have to show consistent picture of client or TCP connection to the Linux TCP IP stack. So we use socket API for control. <coughs> so even that even the NIC is dedicated, the application <coughs> uses socket binaries and accept those control system calls. So such that the Linux TCP IP <coughs> recognize existence of those TCP connections. But for data paths, so the, we use NetMap API, so which alters uh, read and write. So the system looks like a picture. So the Linux network stack looks like this. But this NIC is dedicated to this application, and the packet buffers are pre-allocated, <coughs> and which are linked to Linux TCP stack, and application, and the NIC. So we can move packet around very, very cheaply. So the, to move packets from NetMask packet buffers and between NetMask packet buffers and TCP IP, the Linux TCP IP, the we free allocate uh, the SK bus, uh, which saves a lot of cost. And um, how it works is basically application uh, triggers NIC IO using NetMask <coughs> API system, board, which is actually IO control on the port. So, how to transmit the data is application put some data in packet buffers directory instead of calling write. Um, but stack map or this netmap extended netmap API uh, pushes this packet into the Linux TCP IP, which is uh, the modified version of the TCP send message. Then the, the netmap API pushes the packetized data into the new transmit. On receive, Imagine that some packets are coming to the NIC, then the application kicks NIC to trigger some, uh, something like RX3 and something like that. So th then it brings packets into the packet buffers. After that, the before returning from the system call, it pushes packet into the Linux TTP IP stack, which is actually in a PGR or SIP. Um, but the netmap or stack map, uh, the intercept packet uh, near SK data ready, and so the packet to avoid some overhead. So after that, after returning from the system call, this application reads the data from packet buffer directly. That is how it works. So to do that, uh, the we our implementation is currently based on Linux 4.3 and changes. Uh, about 200 lines of code. We also need to, needed to modify NetMap for six by 68 lines of code. Also, we need new kernel module, about 200, 20, 200 lines of code. So the, from, from now on, so we're gonna report some initial measurement. So we use two machines uh, with some pretty standard CPUs and NICs. Uh, for the server, the, we for comparison or baseline, we use Linux with uh, the interrupt mitigation value by default. Uh, we also try the interrupt moderation to, uh, setting with Rx U6 zero, but uh, the, it didn't perform well the, the, when we have many TCP connections. Or we use stack map. For the client, we basically use uh, standard Linux with WRK HTTP benchmark. <coughs> so the here is the result. <coughs> uh, so server is serving uh, the one kilobyte HTTP OK message and using single CPU core. So the, again, so X axis is concurrent number of TCP connection and the Y axis is number of descriptors written by epoch weight. So stack map actually doesn't use epoch weight because it has a bit of linear complexity. So, uh, uh, but some, we use something similar. So as a result, uh, if we use stack map, we can get less file descriptors for each event loop. Okay, so as a result, we could reduce average and tail latency. <coughs> so the green again means the stack map, and the red means so we reduce latency by half. 
powerful by what you have in that way. So as a result, we can also increase throughput as well. So they all use again same data set. Um, stack map has uh, the twice three times or forty percent performance improvement. So I think it's pretty positive result. And uh, it makes sense. Again, we use new opportunity of dedicating a NIC to a single application. So we also ported some memcached for the, to use to run on top of stack map. So we used mem -Rack benchmark tool as a client on the server. Uh, the server is Linux or stack map. So client generates some 10% set and 90% get. So object size is uh, the one kilobyte. Again, we use single CPU core. So we also compare our result with sister, which is, again, the innovative the user space TCP IP on top of DPDK. <laughs> so the result was actually surprising. So the I, ex I didn't expect the stack map, stack map can uh, outperform so the user space TCP IP. So it, well, it is pretty small margin, but the, it's slightly does better than user space TCP IP. But definitely it is not perfect because it doesn't scale very well, as well as, uh, as good as uh, the system. So the, for <coughs> our final test was we used additional client and we used smaller object size to, to prevent from, to prevent a link from saturated. Uh, so we used three additional servers and we enabled four HCP cores as a server. So I mean, Linux or Sista or Stagma. So the, in this experiment, the, up to the four CPU cores, uh, Stagma is slightly better or the same, but after eight CPU cores, unfortunately, it didn't scale well. So this is our future work. We're going to improve scalability. So here's the conclusion. So the good thing is, uh, maybe it is not obvious, this is obvious to you, but it was not, not obvious to me. So Linux TCP IP, the protocol processing part is very, really, very fast. So the, uh, also, the, we can bring the most of techniques, such as some SKB pre-allocation or some application driven the NIC IO, et cetera. We can bring techniques in user space TCPs into Linux TCP IP, actually. So, a little bit details of what makes Stackma fast with, we have some list. So basically we take all the advantage of the NetMap framework. So number one, it is well known, it is system core patching. Also NetMap has a really nice flexible alloc memory allocator, which is something similar to the, in the, in the morning, the Red Hat guys speaks, spoke about some packet pages, They're pretty similar. So, the point is, so NetMap's buffer pool, so the manages uh, the pool of packet buffers, so which can be, so each of packet buffer can be dynamically linked to NIC links without doing the expensive DMA map or AMAP sync call. That is pretty good. So also, as you know, there's no SKB allocation, deallocation, also there's no VFS layer. Um, processing request or response. Also, again, we can synchronously execute network stack with application. All of the techniques are already done, used by user space TCP IP, but we integrated it into the Linux TCP IP because it has nicer features. Thank you very much. Any of the user space, uh, the other TCP stacks, did you try any of them? Like the other TCP, so we started Sista because I, thought, oh, Sista, I thought this is the most credible one, isn't it? Yeah, it well, I guess it's the most famous one, yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, but again, it doesn't scale very well. But so Sista, the, I, yeah. You, so you're thinking of one kilobyte object. Uh, you tried sending megabytes of data? Megabytes of data says, uh, I try, but uh, it's not surprising. So, I mean, so NetMap, as you know, doesn't support the TSO as well. So, we support GRO, G, sorry, GL, G, GSO, but it doesn't support TSO. So, the, so, in my measurement, 
for the uh, fifth 1.5 uh, MTU, so it it so it it fa it fails to Linux TCP after four kilobytes of packet or uh, three packets of response. What do you mean? Uh, so the, when the server serves only single packet, like one kilobyte message. Okay, it performs really well. But it serves uh, some uh, large message, something like several megabytes, or one megabyte, or tens of kilobytes, uh, the Linux performs better. Can, can you go back to your slides, because uh, where you have the... the oh, so I, I, I don't have the graph there, here. No, no, I have. In your presentation, you have the, the net map, uh, whatever. The which one? Go back to the, yeah, here. Yep. You have packet buffers. Does it mean that when the application writes uh, something, yep. it's stored on the right side? Yes, packet buffers. So the, the this application has direct packet buffer here, okay? But the application here, the standard application, when it calls write system call, it's just about to here, and packet calls from another link. No, I'm speaking of the stack map application, not the regular. Oh, so if that map application goes to the right system call. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't work. Currently. So but what have you tested exactly? You put the data in the packet buffers with the M map stuff? You, you yeah, exactly, map? exactly. This packet buffer will expose to the stack map application. Okay. Yeah, yeah, then the same message, uh, how the, the TCP stack, for example, uh, TCP stack needs to do a return speed. How, how it's working? Okay, so it's a bit of detail, but uh, okay, so when Imagine that this application can put some data here, okay? So the, this packet is transmitted by the link, okay? But the stack map actually uh, it keeps that packet uh, just by unlinking the packet buffer from the new buffer, okay? Uh, after that, for example, the packet is identified to be lost. It simply re-link uh, that packet buffer <coughs> into the new link and so how do you allocate memory here? So here, basically, so you know the netmap allocates some the breaks or arbitrary number of the packet buffers. So the I mean, it's a static range. Yes, yeah, static. Oh. Is it huge pages? It's not. Sure. It's not huge. So packet buffer consists of multiple of two k bytes, but not huge pages. So you have here. Read, read also takes the packet directly from the link? Yeah, so the, this application is not supposed to call read. This application just refers to packet buffers. Uh, Exposed as a net method, yes. So, because like, so, uh, so like the way you basically have a dedicated NIC with the NetMap, yeah. so NetMap also has that concept of the software things. So based on the any any filter, you can just have a simple, let's say, I. I just want, let's say, port 80's traffic to be mapped on this stack. So you can have that and you can put, just just change the pointers to the to the software ring and make your application work on the software ring so that it can, so you don't need to basically kind of isolate the whole NIC from every any other yeah. application. Uh, so if the this NIC receives some packets for different applications, it is simply allocate, we allocate some proper escape, uh, non pre allocated escape. Uh, uh, but we expect that administrator assigns different IP address here, such that application so packets to this application doesn't come from here. This is what we expect. What I'm saying is like you also have the concept of the software rings. Like what you have mapped is the hardware ring of the network. Uh, okay, so, so it's a, actually, so logically, it's a real two rings, okay? So one ring is a replica of NIC ring, so the alternate stuff. We also use some application visible ring, which is different from NIC ring. But uh, the buffer comes from the same, same yeah. group, so that we can move packets between these rings uh, without copying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know, how do um, uh, the buffers, the NetMap buffers, how do you pass those to the TCP IP stack and back, especially when you say there's no SKB ally. This all the oh, we pre -allocate. so. You just, you have a cache and you reuse those SKB. Yeah, so we cheat uh, SKB reference count. 
not to be free to really. <laughs> Because you know, under underscore underscore SKB free really free SKB, which is expensive. So, but even that packet buffer is already pre-allocated. So we we can skip that. Do you have a key tree or something in which those uh, packages are available? So we are we are kind of defining after the packet, but it's gonna be the pretty soon public available. We are planning to upstream to NetMath uh, because it cannot be in Linux. <laughs> so, so for upstream, are you planning also uh, the hooks to the CKIP stack? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it actually is full of hack, unfortunately. So, so on receive side, it simply calls NAPGR receive, but we have to intercept packet at uh, SK data ready or something. And that also on transmit side, we hack uh, TCP send message to claim SK bar from pre-allocated or not from the SKB. Uh, there's also such a time handling. Uh, so also we need some skip QDIS bypass at right after underscore underscore the MQX meet because I don't like locks there. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's full of hack actually. Anyway, so the, it's, uh, the, the, we are currently working on the improving scalability uh, to number of CPU cores. Do you have any hacks on there? So when you just write the data, the image space into these packet buffers, what the, how do you indicate to so this black, second black arrow in the middle, this socket API, what's this? So how do you indicate, how do you treat with this information? <coughs> This indicates every single socket, uh, bind, listen, read, bind. Yeah, but this includes only socket, bind, listen, access, or some compound sequence. So, so how, 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 how you tell to tra start transmission? So what's, it, what's okay. the indication? So basically the stack map application mm -hmm. puts some packet onto the ring, it's ring, yes. okay? So it just advances some head pointer, okay? Then the, the upon system calls, so that's, that's what we're saying. Like which which system call? Yeah, you have ah. the new system call? No, no, no. Well, so it's NetMap implements a character device, so that it implements its own IO control. Okay, so you're doing IO call on NetMap, yeah. but now it knows yeah. that. So this IO call question, I should write the whatever, help, yeah, help exactly. pointer. Uh, but I want to specialize to push packets into yeah. the, the TV And on the NetMap side, we have a hack that once yeah. you receive this ring belt, you, you know where it is, now you hook the stuff into the TCP stack yeah. okay, and yeah, we'll legend TCP stack deal now with this SKBs that are pre-allocated now from there on TCP stack goes all the way normal and where you drop the locks on the uh, XMIT and you bypass the DS connection else, right? Uh, okay. yeah. I mean, I mean you bypass all the, all of the QDs, you bypass all the QDs blocks yeah. the uh, net queue logs and so on until you reach the NIC, and in the NIC side, then instead of doing like direct XMIC, you're going to the driver, you're going to the NetMap side, right? Exactly, so the NetMap right. replaces from the NetDevops uh, net pointer. Yeah. So the oh, okay, so, so just different, different XMIC, start XMIC pointer, right? Yeah, yeah. Into, into NetMap, okay. Then there, because it knows it's a special stuff, now it no longer frees it. Makes sense. And uh, what about uh, like offloads? Like you said, there's no GSO so nothing. Yeah, kind of the all the, the reports, the, all the measurements we reported it doesn't enable any offloading, but for Linux we enable. But offload. checksum was offloaded. But checksum offload no. is. Unfortunately, it's not done support checksum offload. Not, like not even checksum offload, and you still have these numbers. Yeah. Okay. Because the message is small. Well, a kilobyte packet. The one kilobyte packet, you know, the checksum in one kilobyte packet is consumed just uh, the 100 nanoseconds or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such a lot. Sure. Okay.